Okay, we're continuing with our lunch breaks for the for this week. A mighty good leader is on the way is our theme. Our scripture verse is Proverbs 11, 3. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. If you want to give to the work of God, you hit the shop now button on Facebook. Tell you to donate now at mfhlb.com. We will be doing an outreach this coming Thursday. We're a vendor, a part of... Um, Somebody else's outreach would, would actually is a huge outreach. 2,000 people are expected. A lot of, a lot of them are kids, um, teens, little kids, families, trunk or treat. But we get to be there, face painting and having a booth for children, um, telling them about the youth group, telling them about um, what God is doing in Las Vegas. You know, great things are happening in the southeast area of Las Vegas. The crime rate of the two worst areas in the state of Nevada gone down. From 2019, the homicide rate, the only one out of all the area commands, gone down. This year, 41%, everybody else went up. So the Lord is definitely um, blessing in this work as we're, uh, you know, we're working with uh, the community and we see results. So that's why we give you an opportunity to give like we do every time we do a lunch break, hitting the shot now button on Facebook to take you to the donate now nmfhlb.com. Okay, so we're covering off of this verse of Proverbs eleven three. We talked a little bit about what integrity meant yesterday. It's the opposite of mischief. And it means, in its purest form, it means perfection. So what's wonderful about this is God does a work inside of a person. And I wanted to talk about, I talked a little bit about um, the, the high priest in the Old Testament will wear something called the breastplate. And in it were stones, and in it was one stone called Thummim, which meant perfection, to help them to make decisions. So I want you to just look at this story uh, about, um, about how important it is to have over your heart, over your decision maker, which comes from the inside of you, over your soul, that makes a decision, this breastplate, this um this integrity that will guide you. And this is uh, 1 Kings twenty two thirty four. Here's a little backstory on it, and we'll tell the whole story. Uh, basically, King Ahab, leader of the people of, of Israel, but a wicked king. His heart had departed from the Lord his God, and he married somebody who uh, was known as Jezebel, and she was definitely uh, had nothing and wanted nothing to do with um, the people of God or God's ways. Um, in fact, she was bad news for the king, but he married her for whatever reasons, political or whatever reasons happened. They were a couple and he wanted to go to war. He was a very strong man. He was a, a courageous man in that respect. Um, he was, you can have great qualities and God has put in you that are for, and use them for all the wrong things. And that's what Ahab did. You know, at times he would repent and God would grant him grace when he repented. It, it was, it's an awesome story. So at one point, he's getting pretty bad right now. In fact, um, he's making a decision to go to war because he, he, he wanted more and wanted more. And that's how you got it. You went to war and took somebody else's. And so he justified a war, went to war, and he took with him, the king of Judah, I think his name was Hezekiah, I'm not sure, but this is the backstory to the breastplate and making decisions where your integrity shall of the upright will guide you, that it will be inside of you, that God does a work inside of you, where you're guided, you're guided by something that it's, God has put within you. Um, and we'll talk more about that in other lunch breaks this week, but in this story, he basically got the king of Judah to go with him to war. And bottom line is, he was setting this guy up. And I can tell you he was setting this guy up because when he actually went into battle, the king dresses differently than everybody else. And Hezekiah made sure he didn't look like a king when he went into battle. And, and it says that the opposing army, that the king of the opposing army had like 32 generals or officers and he said, don't fight anybody. <laughs> these 32 men, everybody else can go to war. Mike, you can fight every, but these 32 guys go after the king. He was targeting Ahab. So during this battle, these 32 guys 
didn't worry about anybody else, fighting anybody else, whether they fought against them or not. They were mercenaries going after the king. And they came upon Hezekiah, or the king of Judah, and he, sh he cried out, ah, he cried out. And they recognized that that's not Ahab. That's not who we're supposed to be fighting against. And they all left him. Ahab was in battle in disguise, incognito. So I'm saying he was setting up the other king. He's a wicked guy. And this is what the Bible says. 1 Kings 22, 34. Understand, God had already had a prophet prophesy to Ahab. And I'm not going to that story. It's a really good, good story. Prophesy to Ahab that if he went to battle, See, God probably knew he was out there to set up the king of Judah. If he went to battle, he was going to die. Ahab blew it off, listened to his own prophets, forget the prophet of the Lord. He had his own, he had his own media. He doesn't need, he doesn't need the, the truth. He, he's got his own media going on. And um, now he's incognito. Um, his plan didn't work. They didn't kill the uh, king of Judah. Um, they didn't know who he was. Listen to this verse. 1 Kings 22, verse 34. And a certain man, oh, there's always a certain somebody out there, isn't there? A certain man drew a bow at a venture. I'm trying to show you drawing a bow. <laughs> at a venture, which means in his simplicity. That word actually is the same word for integrity. In his own integrity. He just drew a blow, bow <laughs> and just launched it. And it smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness, which happens to be the joints and the breastplate. In his armor, in his breastplate, even though he's, he wasn't looking like a king and done up, that bow, uh, that arrow from that bow just happened to go right into the joints and the breastplate. Right in it. It made contact past his armor. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, turn your hand and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. He died from that. Now, what's fascinating to me about this is the fact that his breastplate or his integrity was bad. It was bad to perfection. <laughs> and the word of God says, the integrity of the upright shall guide them but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Integrity is the opposite of mischief. He was definitely mischievous. And, it's, and integrity means perfection. And the very thing that should have protected him, the arrow made it through. So there is an example of somebody who should have been protected. But his press plate and his, his particular armor wasn't the real deal. And his perverseness destroyed him. But the integrity of the upright, which was not Ahab, will guide them. But the integrity, I'm going to use the word integrity here. The Bible says, but the perverseness. But I'm going to say integrity because... You, integrity can be used, it means perfection. Well, he was perfectly bad. <laughs> he was perfectly messed up. His cup of wrath was at the top. But the integrity of a transgressor, not an upright person, will destroy them. Of course, the Bible says, but the perversion of transgressors shall destroy them, whether they be kings or lowly people. Integrity can be, whether you can be in integrity in, in, a, in a high position or in a low position. It's all the same. God sees our heart. And I love the fact that God wants us to be upright. And we're going to talk tomorrow about how God, what the word upright means, and how God puts that into a believer. Why? Because he wants you to be led. He wants you to be guided. He wants you to have confidence in it, especially as he raises you up to do his will. All right, God bless you. Have a great Tuesday. 
We will see you on Wednesday. There'll be no lunch break on Friday because it's a holiday. It's Nevada Day. So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday coming up. A kiss to Jesus.